Well, hello, hello. Uh, and also, uh, thanks for the raid, uh, Togglebit. Um, I was watching Uncle Scientist and saw that he raided you, and I was like, okay, well, I guess you're gonna you're gonna be online for a little bit longer. Maybe I'll even be able to raid you uh, at the end, uh, like we've done several times in the past. But I guess that's not the case. So hopefully it was a good stream. Uh, hopefully Togglebit had a good time. Everyone else, hello and welcome. It's awesome to have you here. Hello, Privan, uh, KO2 fan, Diablo D3. Uh, we are uh, and selective duplicate. Uh, all right, so. Also, Zilby is, is standing on my keyboard. Okay, there you go. Uh oh, pet the cat. Let's let's see if he's uh he's up for it. You, you wanna like sort of? This is There we go. Now he's he's enjoying that. Oh, and we got some purrs. Not enough to activate the mic though. Uh, can we hear his purr? Maybe. Can you? He's he doesn't want to be right right next to the uh, the microphone. Although he's he smells it, but not from the right side. Yes, I know. Cat cat ASMR, the best type of ASMR. Okay, are you done? Oh, he's seen. He's seen the little voids and he's like, okay, I want to catch those. Um, as long as long as he doesn't knock the uh, the monitor over, we'll be fine. So let me get this out of your way, Zobi. We'll turn this on so you can see him when he goes over to his little. Well, um, all the stream cats, yes. Uh, okay, so today, uh, we are continuing to work on our uh, web stuff, so like re rebuilding our uh, to-do app in URS. So this is GitHub, space code. Open up this guy. Used to have more, need to keep up. Oh man, yeah, I bet, I bet there's tons of them out there. Why do you spell you as you? I don't know. Um, it's probably, it is an interesting choice of a, a name for it. Um, especially since they seem to be going for like a very similar to um, React, but it also kind of feels like it's uh, maybe a little bit of uh, view um, in there as well. So may maybe that's why. Uh, all right, so we've got you up and running. Let's do here. We'll do a get the back end going. When you say to something disgusting, you say "ew." That's a so that's the thing is like, do we really want? Do we really want um a framework to have like that name to it? I don't know because like. The framework itself doesn't make me think that, but the name, I can so totally see that. Okay, I think we're just about ready. All right, so this is, um, 
this is what we've got so far. So for everyone who's new here and ha hanging out with me, uh, thank you for uh, um, the uh, the Zilby petting session. And then also, uh, we're going to actually get started with some REST development here. So previously, um, I had created a, a to-do app in Vue.js, uh, and then also it has a Node.js backend and Postgres. Uh, and this is this is what it looks like. It's fully operational. It's fully working. I start it with the same Docker compose command, so that way we can sort of like compare them back and forth. And uh, I'm I'm basically going through and just like refamiliarizing myself with all the changes in you, getting everything that we need to be able to get done in you. Like for example, drop down lists, getting you know being able to sort and filter, all that fun stuff. Uh, so that way I can create a course in uh in rebuilding like this from view into you uh so right now we are working on inputs so if i type something in here we actually do get that uh that two-way binding well actually is it two-way binding no we get one-way binding uh it's sort of like a react style binding where this is going into a a state inside of this component and then uh, it's a little bit weird, but this input component is also part of this component. Eh, it's it's a thing. Um, let's see, Uncle Scientist, hello. Um, let's see, select a duplicate. You love Rust, writing Rust now. Actually, I haven't explored any Rust web-based stuff though. It's getting better and better all the time. And I would say the backend stuff is a little bit more fleshed out than the front end right now but the front end is like decent enough that being said i wouldn't necessarily do any um business work with it like for for a company because it's just not it's um they're all still alpha and they're all still like changing things quite often back ends however are significantly in a better state um, okay, so what I want to do is I want to, like, if I if I hit delete, that doesn't delete this. Uh, and so if I start adding new things, it just appends to it. So we need to fix that. Uh, and so there's there's a bunch of things that we can do. Uh, I think it's called a text input wrapper is what we what we have on this. So uh, this is a a function component in you. So I just basically use this and it's styled component, which because I'm using stylus to give me uh, CSS capabilities, we're not using that right now, but it has the ability to. We take in any props that we have, which right now we don't have any props. Uh, and then we are using use state. So it's very, ah, you know, I have I actually stopped using React right when use state started becoming popular. So I'm actually not familiar with like how close to React this is. Uh, but they use a use state here. And so I'm I'm assigning this to a new string. And then every single time there's an on input event, I then append that input coming in. So I think that's a that's a problem for us. So I kind of want to maybe on blur. Um, there, there's a bunch of different ones and we can go and take a look at, uh, let's see, MDN input. Let's go take a look at the events and choose which one we, mm, probably not input event. I want, all the events input form field I guess I just want input and then a list of events but do you have a list of events here
Hmm. It's the same one, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. Um, how about blur? Input event blur. Uh, uh, okay, so what, what do you do? Um, it fires when an element has lost focus, and I think a change happens... When change event is fired for input select text area elements, when an alteration to an element's value is committed by the user, unlike the input event, the change event is not necessarily fired for each alteration to an element's value. We may end up having to use change for this. When the element loses focus after its value is changed but not committed. Okay, so when it loses focus, if the form is is submitted, okay, so I think I think that will work. Let's try on change. I think that it's just going to be an event now, an event type. And instead of data, I think it's now value. But I don't remember anymore. You're not hating this. Wait, nope. Now you're hating it. OK, so no, no method named value. There is something we can probably do here. Um, and I don't need to do this anymore because I think I just need to set it to whatever it is. So it's no longer going to be event.data. Let's just, let's just console log the event. So if I say, hello, now nothing happens until I tab out, then we get our change event. So it is a change. And inside of here, current target is the entire body, so that's not helpful. We can go into target. And inside of target, we could get the value maybe. So event dot target is a function that returns an event target, uh, which then we have to unwrap because it's an option. Is that a property? Is that a function? All right, let's let's see what this is. So that gives us the actual DOM element of the of the input. And here's this value right here. But uh, let's see, you are a you're a full DOM node. And so we saw here that the unwrap and it gives us an event target. All right. Documentation time. Right, uh, we start by going to event because it's using WebSys behind the scenes. 
So it's this event. And then from this, we get to event target. All the event listeners. So because it's a child of object, I can like to string and value of, but that's not going to give us what we want because that's going to give us like object object because, you know, reasons. Now there's methods from deref, so I wonder if I can deref it. So I can do like as string. Undefined, that's, that's not helpful. Okay, there's JS value. Yeah, but I need to get the value out of it. I don't think it's going to be in any of the froms. We can maybe JS cast it, but to what? So it's not a JS string, it's a JS DOM element. Um, oh, I forgot. I turned off the music when we were trying to hear Zilby purr. Let me turn that back on. Thank you. And hello, Chantilly. Okay. Do I have event target on? Too loud. Okay. Let me turn that down a little bit. How about what? How about that? Oh, and of course, no, it's not. Also, hello, Bear Duda. Oh, I'm too loud compared to it. Let me turn myself down. Okay. How about, how about that? Okay. I turn, I turn the music up and myself back up. There we go. Maybe, maybe then I'll just like stop, stop reacting like on, on a single, single data point. Okay, so, uh, uh cargo.toml. Okay, so we're using WebSys and we have this features HTML input element, but apparently we need event target too. Okay, I wonder if that's going to give us more stuff. Um, okay, so we know, let's see, let 
So target equals event dot target. Uh, we can, I'm just going to unwrap this for right now. And that gives us this event target. Um, okay. So we have, we have the features open now. So now can I get something out of it? Target dot. Ooh, as string shows. I don't know if that's gonna work still because do an as ref maybe. Value of maybe you get the value. So target value of that value equals. You, you become an object. Let what do I get from you? Nothing. Cool. Uh, let's take a look at value now. exactly the same thing so we've got the input the input itself so value of isn't helpful oh now you don't have any suggestions uh let's see what was another one as value we can try or as string I think is what it was still undefined uh, do you have anything else in here input It keeps on doing this to me where the documentation takes me everywhere other than the current version, which is not great. So on change does give me a change. Yeah, that, that seems to be true. Okay, so we might have to use JS cast. Okay, so we have JS cast, target cast, and node ref are our three choices. Okay, so we need wasm bind gen. Let's trace this backwards. So here's our input. We have on change. We have, okay, let's do our cautious change first. So on cautious change, 
it comes back to here. So then we do a batch callback. Interesting. Uh, I wonder what the difference between batch callback and just callback is. Oh, use batch callback. So if something unexpected happens, we can return none and do nothing. Okay, so apparently, I guess uh, normal callback doesn't allow us to do that. When events are created, the target is undefined. It's only when dispatched does the target get added. Okay, so a target equals, so our event, call target, we get this option event target. Events can bubble, so the listener might catch events from child elements which are not of type HTML input element. Um, yeah, I guess that's true. Uh, I was trying to think like in, in our case, that might not be true. Because I don't have anything else, but like if the body changes somehow, then maybe that could happen. Uh, let's see, so target, we do an and then. Okay, so we dine into HTML input element. Oh, so that's what we need to do. We need to turn it into an HTML input element. And then we can get this. Dangerously, we have our event. Uh, we take that, we get the target. We do an unchecked into. The HTML input element. Can I do that without? Um, I have WebSys. I, I think can't do that without um, whatever it's called, right? Uh, Wasm Bindgen. Let's see. So we get the target. So unchecked into. It's not finding that. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, so you can't find that. Oh, okay. Use Wasm Pine Gen. Uh, do they? Okay. Does you re-export Wasm Bind Gen? Oh, I forget where to find the re-exports. Um, You're not going to find it there. How about you? Oh, wait, Let's see it up here. Can I? Oh, no, I can't. Okay. Never mind. It has a dependency in Wasm Bind Gen, though. Maybe I can just use that. Uh, there was that unchecked. Unchecked into. So let's.
Okay, so it can't find unchecked into. It has unchecked from. Can it go the other direction? So I want like an HTML, uh, HTML input. Ooh, no, I don't see any HTML stuff. Okay, so I think we need Wasm bind gen. Uh, we could also take a look at some of the other methods before we go down that path. Target cast. Target cast comes with you. Okay. Okay, so we do a target dine into this HTML input element. Or we can do a target unchecked into. Okay, let's try. I mean, we, in this case, we know what it is. We, we can try the unchecked first. So let's start over with this. We have, this is all, this is gonna get it all in one go. So we can do it one at a time. So we wanna get the HTML element. So this is gonna be our event, target. Oh, no, 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 it's just target unchecked into. So, interesting, event dot target unchecked into. And then it's going to be that HTML input element. Can you find that? No. No method name in this concurrent scope. Um, okay, so we have to use you target cast. I'm kind of surprised that uh, Rust Analyzer can't can't figure that out. Usually it can. Okay. Okay. So that gives us this element. Let's see if this. See what this is. Okay, so it's it's the actual full element that we got. Excellent. Uh, so then we can get the value of it, can't we? And that's a method that you could just call on it. So value. There we go, okay. So this works, although if it were to fail, this would, it says have unpredictable results, which probably means that it would crash in some way. It's not, not great. Now we're using this callback from, uh, and we would need to use a batch callback, I think, for the safe one. We're grabbing that just from you callback and not 
Link. Oh, this is, okay. Interesting. Looking in here, this is uh, assuming that we're using a struct-based component, sort of like the uh, React class-based component instead. But we are not. Uh, let's see. So I want to use a batch callback. Okay, so I'm I'm apparently using this callback. Uh, I think okay. Where's a batch? Okay, it must scope batch callback. Creates a callback which will send a batch of messages back to the linked component's update method when invoked. The callback's function return type is generic to allow for dealing with both option and vec nicely. Option can be used when dealing with the callback that might not need to send an update. Okay, so batch callback is inside UHTML scope. Okay, so I want a batch callback as a function. They're doing this off of link. But link off of I don't have I don't have a link because I don't have a context. Can I get a context? And these are all the examples from callback. I guess that, okay, there's callback from. Uh, and I use callback. Anything else? Is there like a batch in here? So there's the from. Uh, that's it. From, from is it. guess I could have it crash if it's not the right thing, but that seems wrong.
use context hook is used to consume context and function components. Okay, so we can use the use context here. Okay, use context. And then we can get link off of it. I don't know if that's, that's true, right? Because the, um, the what what's the other context uh like if i if i just do the traditional one we have this context oh which is a it's this context for self then it has these other things on it so i wonder maybe maybe, maybe it'll work we can try it so let's try a pub struct. Um, this will be a text input wrapper context. I don't have anything to put into it right now. Why did that make you so upset? I mean, you should be fine, you should be fine. You're just sitting here on your own. We don't really care. Okay. Oh, yeah, from. If I wanna put it back, it'd be a from. There we go. So we wanna use a use context. So if I wanna do something like context equals use Context. What do you take? Review state. This is, okay, this is the only place that they actually use it. Okay, so use context, tell it what type it is. So this is gonna be that text input wrapper context. Okay. We'll then unwrap that. Okay, that gives us this text input wrapper context, which is not gonna help me at I, I don't think, unless they add something to it. I, I don't think I'm now gonna have like context.link, am I? Cause I, I can't imagine I'm gonna have context.link. Uh, like batch callback. Yeah, no field link on type. Now, unless, do I have to tell you that you're a, so you're a theme. Clone debug and partial equal is not doing anything crazy. Ooh, 
context provider. So your, your theme button, which is inside of here, which is inside of here. So we need a context provider. Every child here and their children will have access to this context. Context equals... Okay, sets it equals to that. But I still don't know how it's going to get access to like that link thing. It's very, um, making me very hesitant to like do the, do the big refactor to like go forward with that. Cause that's just using this use state. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that's gonna work for us. Uh, where's our events again? So we know that the dangerous change works. Now I do this as an input element. Uh, I wonder if we can create a non-input element and just sort of like see what happens if in the worst case scenario. So let's put this back into just a callback. need this context. Hi. There's there's no toys for you anymore. I threw them all earlier. As he looks disappointed at me. Uh okay. So we have our data that we don't care about, and we just display the value. Now this is gonna be an HTML input element. So what if I try to cast it to something else? What if I try to say like HTML uh, text area element? This will fail. This is not a text area, but it worked. Stupid duck typing. Um, so apparently we can get the same type of things that you get in JavaScript in Rust in, when you're using this type of thing because uh, the methods and properties in, and this is just a guess, the methods and properties in an input uh, element are exactly the same as a text area element. So therefore it's like, ah, yeah, yeah, sure. That's what you have now. It, it works. Uh, what's something else that can have a value? Maybe a HTML, uh, like an input is still a radio. Maybe select. Style element. Fail? It's literally yelling at me that there is no, there is no function named value out of here and yet it's working. I wanna make sure that, okay, is this, is it just failing to compile, but I'm getting the previous code in here? Let's, uh, 
make sure. Maybe, maybe I'm getting the previous code. Yeah, okay, so I'm getting that test, but not this test. So, okay, that's what's happening, is it's failing, and therefore it's not working. So, if I do a... text area element. We get hello and test, so that, that seems to work. And if I were to change this from an input, so can I say, um, what's like, you can do like a p tag maybe. Uh, p on change. Oh, but I have no idea how to make this. I don't actually know how to make it change though. Um, so that's not gonna fire, is it? So maybe, maybe it'll be fine. Cause I, I can't actually like change you. Uh, and Firefox isn't aware of any kind of event on this. Like it, it refused to put it on there because it's a P tag. So maybe that'll work. Maybe this will just all be fine and it's all gonna be part of uh, just the fun, the fun working with JavaScript. And we'll just do a target unchecked into because I don't think we can do a target. What was the other way? Target dine into, we can try that. And then we tell it what to do. Okay, let's log element. No errors. Oh, uh, we kind of have to put this back. Okay, we get undefined. So, element is undefined from a target dine into, uh, wait. HTML input element. Ah, okay. So with this one, I'm getting, are you an option? You're something. I'm getting this, but I got undefined previously. Uh, can I actually check exactly what this is? Um, target die into isn't giving me any information. Okay, it's an option with the thing inside of it. Okay, so we can do that. That's the reason why they're doing a map here is 
uh, it's, it's basically like a map of one thing. Uh, so it's, it's not like a, a map through an array where, or uh, I guess a vector where we're just like, okay, one thing doing it all over the place. It's, it's an option. So you're just doing it to the sum. So it's a way for us to get into there without having to do like the if let sum entire thing. So it's a little bit uh, shorter syntax. So what I would do for that here is we take this option and we can map you. Um, and this is going to be the actual input element. And then what do we want to do with this? Uh, in this case, I probably want to set the data here to be whatever the value is. Uh, probably two things. I want to first log the input element. Let's get the value. And then I want to say, okay, data dot uh, set the value. And I don't want to return that. Use of move value, right, because the move value is moved here. So can I clone you because you're a string? Yes, okay. And then what are you upset at me about? Uh, called map and an option where value f is a closure that returns you and type that. Okay, so Clippy wants me to use if let sum. So I can actually have Clippy fix that. Wait a second. You should keep my code, Clippy. I'll 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 do it do it your way later. Let's verify this works first. Okay, so now I get hello here, hello printed out. If I backspace That works. Put whatever you want, select all, delete. Now it is on change, so I have to um, I have to like lose focus or press return, and then that sort of sets it. But so far so good, okay. Now what I could do is I could do both. We could have on, on input, that sort of like updates the internal state and then an on, on change fully sets it to be whatever whatever is passed in. So just for just for safety's sake. I don't know if there's any value in that though. I think on change will be enough for us. So there we go. Let's turn this into an if let sum. So I'll just do this up here. Okay, so that's gonna go down there. All right, I see how I'm gonna do it now. Okay, so if let sum equals element dot, uh, is it just element? I think so. This is uh, this is an option. Okay, so if let sum this, 
then do this. And I'm not returning anything, so I don't need that semicolon. Now I can even bring this up and do my if let sum up here. And then move this to right there. Okay, so we attempt to turn it into an HTML element. And so we we then if let sum this. Now, if it's failing, we probably want to know. So if it's if it's an else, uh, now I'm not returning anything, so this is gonna be fine. So I can just log. Um, can I do error? Yes, okay, so I can do error. Uh, this would be a console.error into JavaScript, essentially. And here we're just gonna say, error um, converting uh, HTML input into an HTML input. Um, so if I go back to HTML text area, we should get that message out. There we go. Error converting HTML input into an HTML uh, input element. Um, now, unfortunately, there's no way for me to get a good um, line number here. So by having this text, I can then search through my code base for it at the very least. So that's why I'll, I'll keep it as a static string. Okay, but I think, I think this should work. Now, um, how do I send this out of the the input element? Because like it's great to be here, but I want to like e emit this as an event or like catch something else. Like if this is uh, React, we'd be having we take in a property with a method inside of it that we can call to like maybe set state somewhere else in a parent, uh, or I can maybe send a message. Uh, you seems to allow all of those things. Maybe we can use an agent. Okay, this can be used to coordinate state between components or other agents. That's kind of what we want. But apparently we need a bridge. Otherwise the agent disappears. Uh, bridge allows bi-directional communication between the agent and the component. Uh, okay. A use bridge hook is also provided to create bridges in a function component. Okay, excellent. Okay, we could dispatch. Dispatch allows this unidirectional communication between a component and an agent. Yeah, 
Agents that use web workers private and public will incur a serialization overhead on the messages they send and receive. Okay, that that makes sense. And an example. Okay, so th in this case, we'd be the producer, like our input element would be our producer. Looks like it's gonna be a traditional struct-based component, so it's gonna be slightly different than what we're going for. Okay, so they have, they store away their dispatcher. And on update, when the message is clicked, They self event bus send, event bus message, message received. Okay. And then there's gonna be another component that's listening to that. So this is this is one way, but I wonder if I can like pass in a function also, because that's like the classic React method of doing stuff. I, I wanna try both. I want to try. I definitely want to try both of them. Let's um, let's see. Can I set a property for a function in here? So I don't have this context. I don't need that. So can I say um, like uh, let's see, changed. on change is going to be an fn i don't know if it needs to be mute um oh do i need to tell it like what it's going to take in let's find out so in here in our callback uh, I'm doing the data set value, but I also want to do a props dot on change. I want to pass in the value. You. Add dine keyword before this trait. Wait, can I really do? Oh, it's a trait, right? Oh, is use parenthetical notation instead. Oh, like that. Okay. Function. That. Uh, you are upset. So we need dine in front of you too. Okay, if it's a properties, it has to have dine, which is not allowed. So I can maybe box it. but then we can't use partial equal. Okay, so I don't think I can pass in a function. So I think using an agent is gonna be our only option. Okay. Okay. So, uh, what's, do um 
Who did you say that was? Agents. Uh... Didn't they say there was like a use agent? Oh, use bridge hook. Which I don't see that here. Okay. It's custom hooks. I don't know if I want to use a custom hook yet. So. to use bridge uh okay it's not in here they claim it is somewhere hmm where is okay use context you where is use um use state okay it's right here so can i do a yeah there's no use bridge So under use functional, it looks like there's there's a lot of things, but use um, use bridge is not one of them. Uh, I do wonder. Okay, if I go back to 18. Oh, there's nothing in functional whatsoever. Okay, great. Um, yeah. Okay, so that that doesn't exist. Uh, next, uh, isn't even on the list here. Oh, documentation. Let's see if the documentation for... Wait, where is... There's like hooks somewhere, right? Oh, it was under function components, predefined hooks. Okay, so then I want to go to next. So function components, hooks. Interesting, okay, so Use bridge is not one here too. So I wonder if that's something they're not planning on doing. We have all these other hooks that are just starting to use. Yeah, and like if I go into there, ah, it doesn't even have anything. It's like this page is the 
Parent child messaging pass data as props. Okay, that makes sense. Child parent messaging uh, pass down a callback via props that the child on the event can call. Okay, so an example. Um, why bridge instead of state? Well, I'm just trying to figure out how to like pass data back and forth. And it looks like, uh, is this a okay, function component callbacks? Can I go over to 19? No, see like it, this, this documentation doesn't exist for the current version. Uh, so it, it, it's a little bit concerning. Uh, and I wonder, I hope this is not, I, well, I hope this is not the end of function callback, of function uh, components. I, I hope that we're not going to have to do state components everywhere. Uh, so let's see. Callback equals, okay, so callback comes from you. We've already seen how to do that. So we pass this in. And then we can call it. So on name entry is this callback. Okay. Props is this props on name entry is type callback. Okay, so can I do that? Can I say in here instead of a function, we'd say um, we can do okay. We could do on uh, input change is going to be a callback with just a, a string inside. Let's say. Okay, it likes that. So I can't use bridge, but I now have access to this callback. So then when this changes, I'm gonna do on input change and pass it in the value. Uh, are you a string? Maybe. Wait a second, okay. Props dot. Yeah, on input change right there. Oh, it's a field, not a method. Ooh, uh, uh, on a change dot. Oh, there's like an emit. Oh, it's an emit. Okay, so we emit the value. Okay. Props has an anonymous lifetime, but it needs to satisfy a static lifetime. I have to like to own to this. No, okay, so I'm emitting you. This callback is a string here. I'm not seeing any evidence of it being anything else.
if I just do a, a static stir, no, okay, you're you're not happy with that. Uh, Mismatch types, okay, expected string, so to owned. Now, okay, so props is anonymous lifetime, but it needs to satisfy a static lifetime requirement. Okay. Um, and that's even if I use value of what's coming in. Okay, so what if I... Uh, I don't want to have to do like static here. Reference must not have a lifetime. Okay, cool. I wonder if I can't do it in here. I wonder if I have to do this outside of this callback. That's, that's exactly what we have to do. Also, what are you upset about now? Let on change equals, oh, I need, okay, I think I need you to be, no, I want you to be on, on change. I need you to be in this callback. All right, well, we're gonna have to continue looking at this next time. Oh, okay, so prop says anonymous lifetime, but needs to satisfy a static lifetime requirement. Data with anonymous lifetime is on line 17. I think you? I was required to live as long as static here on line 21. The event? Like, can I, can I clone the value? I guess I don't really understand. Okay, so column nine, 21 nine. Is that starting from here? So basically just the callback or this event maybe. Or is it because I'm, I'm moving the props? And I need to like clone the props instead. Can I can I even do that? Um, you're not claiming you're clonable. Uh, Dev, uh, Kai, Kayahe? Hello! Uh, okay, so let's do props, clone, and then, then this will be cloned props. Oh, okay, it was fine with that. So then in our home, 
you're yelling at us because we now need to pass in this on input change, which is gonna be a callback. So we're gonna say um, let on put change uh, equals it's gonna be callback from I think you have to tell it what type it is. How do I do this one? Callback from Um, this is going to get like the value and we just want to log this out. So log this value. That one, okay, that's the one I want. Uh, then, on input change. Oh, it's private, okay. So, make you public. No error messages, okay. I don't know. We're we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out. Uh oh, this happens all the time. Okay, so uh testing. This this logged out twice um and so what i want to do is go back to here do this log can i do two things in here can i say like um logging from home i believe so so hello there we go uh, so even though I cloned it, um, apparently because of reasons, uh, it, uh, it is available to me. So that, uh, that's pretty cool. So this is, this is how we can now pass data, uh, back up, uh, the chain. So we're going to have to do this react style as opposed to view style where I just, emit events straight up but in a way it's also kind of view style because i'm i'm creating an event if i think about it i'm creating an event is that true i'm creating an event and emitting it up and i'm forcing you through the type system to listen to that event i don't care what you do with it i just you have to listen to it if i require you to Okay, I, I think I think this is gonna work. Go ahead and clean up. Uh, I don't know if there's gonna be any cleanup right now. We're gonna have to like make some changes to this to be a little bit better. So maybe a little bit more cleanup to do. Figure out exactly how we're gonna want this to work. Uh, maybe move move some of these into extra methods as opposed to just inside of this component right here. I'm not exactly sure. The fact that it works is pretty amazing though. Remove some of our logs, um, but I'm liking it so far. Uh, that being said, in our readme, oh, which I don't have access to here. Here it is. Uh, I want... Uh, let's see. Where would I put this? Uh, we have bring in the router, create the view placeholders. Um, we're gonna have to do like an event system. So like, um, uh, 
how components um, talk to each other. So that's going to be properties going down and callbacks going up. And then I'll probably have like a use state in the top level app that's gonna store everything because there is no um, there is no Redux yet for for you. Um, not too surprisingly, so we're just gonna store all the state in that that single component for for app. All right, uh, let's see. Go ahead and do a little bit of a git. Uh, git clone and we can do a array today. We have, let's see, Microsoft developers chatting. I don't know what they're chatting about. It just says talk shows and podcasts. Dev Spahas is uh, programming and Lana Lux is, uh, they're both doing game development, I want to say. Yeah, Despahas is making his space-based game. Uh, it's not, none of them are in Rust, I don't think. So, uh, oh, Son of Viking also, I don't know that one. Let me, Son of Viking. Uh, I can't, I can't see that. Oh. I'll let the advertisement play while I go take a look at that channel. Uh, in the meantime, okay, so we have input uh, is sending messages up um, with the value. And I'll push that up. All right, what are you? It's such a small window. Uh, I need to. Um. Oh, is a window manager with with Rust. Uh, that sounds interesting. And to clarify, I could do. Uh, All right, let's uh, let's set up a raid for that. So, so Viking, start that raid. Back there. Um. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, I do these streams in the morning when I can wake up uh, on time. Uh, so if you want to get notified when I do them, then I would love it if you follow the channel. Otherwise, I do have a single sort of like scheduled stream on Sunday mornings between 8 and 9 a.m. Mountain Time that I do for about three to four hours. Uh, and that's that's where I go like a lot, a lot more stuff that we are able to do in, you know, a lot more time. I've got to go to my day job. I've got stand up in less than 10 minutes. So once again, thank you for hanging out with me. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I will see you all next time. Uh, and with that, have a good one. Bye.